Hello dear friends of the bass and welcome to my basement. I'm Toby and this is the newest and at the same time the oldest addition to the basement. It's the newest because I got it just a couple of days ago and it's the oldest because it's now the oldest bass I own. It's a 1983 Squire Japan Vintage Series Precision Bass and I think that's about as close as you can get to a 60s precision without spending a fortune. So far I really like the sound and the feel of the bass. It's exactly what I've been looking for. Um, but I'm not happy with the setup. Uh, the previous owner put some heavy strings on it. These are uh, 55 to 110, probably the Dario's and he played with the quite high action and tuned a half step down. So I'm going for standard tuning with some thinner strings, uh, probably 45 to 100 uh, flat one strings and of course a lower action. So I need to do a setup with this bass and this means that I pretty much have to take it apart. So I'm going to take it apart. Let's go. So it's a P bass, all right, and it's true what they say about these Japan vintage squires. It's a well-made P bass. At first I thought these uh, tuner bass plates were bent somehow, and they are, but they are on purpose because these brackets that hold the tuning packs go through the plates and they need a bit of space on the other side. So that's fine. I think these tuners look really cool. They ha have the real vintage vibe. They are, by the way, reverse tuners. So you need to get used to uh, tuning the other way around. They are not super smooth at the moment. I think they may be needing a little bit of loop or oil uh, to get them running smoothly but they work and they hold the tuning well. The neck itself is still straight after more than 40 years and the truss rod is still working, so that's great. Moving down the neck, we have a very good fit of the neck to the neck pocket. This is really nothing to complain about here. This pickguard, by the way, is not the original one. Um, the previous owner decided to swap that for a Fender uh, Dark Tortoise pickguard, which I think looks really well on this bass. Um, I have the original one. That's the original one. 
and I don't like the, the color of this pickguard that much. I think the other one looks way better. And if you look at pictures of other Japan Vintage Squires, they all look kind of like this. And in my opinion, that's kind of a weak point on these instruments. Underneath the pickguard we have not really that much shielding. We have the brass plates beneath the pickups. There is some copper foil uh, underneath the pots and the jack. I think the previous owner did that. Um, other than that, there's no shielding. The bridge is a standard vintage bridge with these uh, threaded saddles where you can adjust the string spacing a little bit. The intonation screws and the springs were a bit rusty in some places. Uh, I cleaned that a bit, but everything works fine. Um, so no problems, they are just a bit of uh, vintage wipes. On the heel of the neck, there's a production date of the neck, which is January 83. And on the body, there's markings for, I think, February 83. Um, so this base was in fact made in 83, in the beginning of 83. So it's probably uh, around 41 years old now. Well, so far I really love this bass, uh, especially with the thinner strings and proper setup and flat wounds. It's, uh, yeah, it's great, plays great, sounds great. It's a bit on the heavy side, 4.2 kilos, um, which is slightly heavier than my other P basses, but it's still not uh, a real boat anchor. Now let's have a look at what I did with this base while I had it apart. Here you can see uh, that I'm cleaning the fretboard with some fine steel wool. The fretboard wasn't super dirty, but I used this opportunity with the neck and strings off. In the background you can hear a little track I recorded with this base after the setup. So enjoy! Next I polished the threads with a Dremel, also wasn't strictly necessary, but then again with the neck off and the strings off, it's a good opportunity to do it. Then I treated the fretboard to some lemon oil. I put a heavy coat of lemon oil on it, let that sit for a few minutes and then took all the excess lemon oil off afterwards. After that I remounted the saddles with the cleaned screws and springs to the bridge. One small issue with the pickguard was that the screw holes weren't countersunk properly, so I corrected that. After that I put the neck back on the body. Then it was time for some new strings. These are the Dario Chromes 45 to 100.
Well, you shouldn't judge strings by their looks, but I think this blue silk on the Dario chromes looks very cool. I left the pickguard off to be able to get at the truss rod and here I set the truss rod with the strings uh, tuned to standard tuning. And finally it was time to put the pickguard back on. And the final step was to check and set the intonation properly. So I hope you enjoyed this little video. If you have any questions on this bass, feel free to ask them in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you the next time.